Dawn, Sunday, June 25th, 1950. Soldiers of the North Korean People's Army, aided by a barrage of artillery, cross the 38th parallel. Escalating tensions between North and South were now plunging the Korean Peninsula into all-out war. Within days, the South Korean capital of Seoul was captured. The invasion caught the United States off guard. Obligated to its fledgling ally in the South, the U.S. hastily regrouped, preparing to send a force to meet the onslaught from the North. A shell of its World War II power, the U.S. military was met with early setbacks and driven to the extreme south of the peninsula, to the port of Pusan, where they would make a final stand and wait for reinforcements from home. Among those reinforcements were men of the 65th Infantry Regiment from Puerto Rico, known as the Boren Caneers, in tribute to the island's native name. The Puerto Rican unit had participated in the First and Second World Wars, but had never been truly tested in battle. The men were immediately pressed into action, attached to the Army's 3rd Infantry Division, and taking part in the breakout from Pusan and Drive North. Following General Douglas MacArthur's daring invasion behind enemy lines at Incheon, the North Korean assault disintegrated and Seoul was recaptured. The momentum turned and the Allied forces pushing north, victory appeared within sight. But hopes of victory soon met cold reality in December 1950 in a remote part of North Korea near Chosin Reservoir. The Chinese army backed by the Soviets, had recently entered the war and launched a massive assault on the overextended U.S. 8th Army and 1st Marine Division. In one of the epic battles in American history, the completely surrounded Americans slugged their way towards safety and evacuation at the port of Hungnam. Stationed on the frozen ridge tops overlooking the port were the Borenkineers, tasked with ensuring that the troops along with thousands of North Korean refugees, could board the ships to safety in the south. After all other troops were evacuated, the men of the 65th finally boarded the ship south, still firing at the advancing forces approaching the pier. For their gallant defense during the Marines' escape, the 65th was awarded the Navy Unit Commendation. Soon, the Borenkineers were back where they had started, the port of Pusan, to once again begin the long slog north. The coming months would witness intense combat. In February, men of the 65th would charge Chinese positions in the last battalion-sized bayonet charge in U.S. history. In April, when the 65th came under heavy attack, Master Sergeant Juan Negron single-handedly held off the onslaught for hours, despite being wounded, until a counterattack could be organized. Originally given the Distinguished Service Cross, Negron would eventually be posthumously awarded the Medal of Honor on March 18, 2014. The 65th would continue to see combat throughout the Korean War, and after decades of honorable service, was desegregated in March 1953. Following the intense Battle of Outpost Harry, the men of the 65th returned home and the unit was deactivated. Nearly 600 men had been killed and 2,100 wounded, making the Korean War the bloodiest conflict in Puerto Rican history. Like the legendary Tuskegee Airmen and Navajo Code Talkers, the Borenkineers proved through countless acts of valor that Latin Americans were just as able as their fellow soldiers across the U.S. Army. Their legacy of service, most notably cemented on the battlefields of Korea, was finally recognized in 2014 when Congress voted and President Obama signed the law awarding them the Congressional Gold Medal. Please welcome veterans of the 65th Infantry Regiment from the Korean War, the Borenkineers.